58-yard attempt for the win! Got it! Surprise, surprise, Drew Brees gets another fourth quarter comeback against the Houston Texans. It looked like Houston was going to win that game with 37 seconds left when Kenny Stills scored a touchdown. But Drew Brees said, nah, Kenny, allow me to reintroduce myself. I am going after the Holy Grail, and you've got 99 problems, and Drew Brees is one of them. We welcome you in to another episode of Time to Football. I'm your ever so lovable host, Hassan Khan, and week one was filled with entertainment, nothing but great comebacks. For instance, the rookie debut of Kyler Murray. Down 24-6 against the Detroit Lions, he came back to tie the game. Speaking of comebacks, that leads us to our new segment called Hungriest Player of the Week. Now this isn't your typical NFL player of the week where we choose the best player with the best stats. This is much more than stats. This is about the player that was the hungriest, the one that wanted the victory the most. Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz led a comeback victory against the Redskins, winning 32 to 27 after being down 17 to nothing at one point. He said, move over Napoleon Dynamite. Prince Harry is the only alpha in town and will not live in the shadow of anyone else. I'm going to throw three touchdowns and lead the Eagles to a victory, and that is why he is the hungriest player of the week. But now looking ahead at week two, we've got two electrifying quarterbacks facing off. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens versus Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. Yes, I did say quarterback, even though Lamar Jackson is a running back. People shout as he throws five touchdowns. Listen, both quarterbacks have gotten their fair share of criticism. People say that Lamar Jackson can't throw. And Kyler Murray is apparently too short, which is a stigma that is rubbed off onto his teammates. Just look at J.R. Sweezy, for example. He thought Kyler Murray was so short that he could jump over him. Take a look at this. Bam! Right there. Sweezy thought he was going for the sunset flip. Instead, Murray got a face full of crotch. Speaking of unintentionally hitting someone, let's talk about the Rams and the Saints. I'm not talking about that pass interference from last year in the playoffs. I'm talking about this young ball boy who now has hemorrhoids following this hit. Michael Thomas gets the catch and oof. You know, it's every college kid's dream to get hit by a bus on campus so that the school can pay for their tuition. Who knows, maybe the Saints are going to pay the tuition for this kid at whatever school he goes to to learn how to handle balls. But in other Saints news, Will Lutz was interviewed by Pat McAfee following his game-winning field goal. He was asked why he only spells his name with one L. His response? It's just Will with one L? Yeah, just one L. We, we, dropped, we gave an L to Houston. <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny answer by Will Lutz and the Texans. They're pretty used to savage moments like that. Like they literally had a quarterback named Tom Savage, so they've had some savage moments. But nonetheless, let's talk about the Rams now. Los Angeles beat Carolina at the expense of a bloodied Eric Weddle. I mean, just look at this guy's face. My God, King, he might be broken in half. You think that's bad? Even though that was gruesome, that wasn't the most red we've seen a face this week. Oh my gosh! Why is his face so red? That is Steelers linebacker Tyler Matakevich. And the reason why his face is so red is because the new helmets have a visor with a red tint to them. That's something that you guys don't know, I didn't know, and Antonio Brown will never know. But at first glance, it looks like there's a lot of blood rushing to his face. And who knows why? Maybe he was embarrassed that everyone was called for a false start except the center. Or there's a very attractive girl that is nearby and he's trying really hard to hold in his flatulence so he can try to impress her. I don't know. Regardless, my man's face is red. Lastly, we wrap things up on Monday Night Football with the Jets and the Browns. Both teams are looking to rebound after an 0-1 start. For the Jets... They're going to be without their starting quarterback, Sam Darnold, who just came down with mono, the kissing disease. My man, I see you. You act all mellow in front of the media, but we know what kind of person you are. Okay. But going from one quarterback that's having fun to another quarterback that's not allowed to have fun, according to Colin Cowherd, that's Baker Mayfield. The Browns want to rebound after a very disappointing loss to the Tennessee Titans. 
And they end this year just how everybody wants to end the year, holding the Lombardi Trophy. What a season for them. What a ride it's been for us as well here in the booth for Charles Davis and our entire... But that brings us to the end of the show, and we want to thank you guys for sticking all the way to the end. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with another weekly show every single week. Also, be sure to hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. The username for all three is at Time to Football. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this episode and enjoy week two.